Hello everyone, this is Porter Nilsson with Randomar Attack, and today we're making this bad boy inside of Blender. Enough talk, straight to the tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is import an image, so you hit Shift A, Image. You can actually just copy and paste or type in the address here if you need it. And here's Shark Crab JPEG. You'll notice that it is actually facing the camera or the direction of the screen. And so I want to be facing frontwards like this. So go to front view, image, add shark crab, and there we go. It is not going to be a one for one sculpt. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side so that I can refer to it whenever I want, but it's not quite in the way. Right there is good. You can scale it, you can move it just like any other object. Now when I start out, I'm not going to sculpt everything. I'm just gonna sculpt the body here. So let's go ahead and grab this, tab in. <laughs> I'm not used to Blender 2.8, so you'll see me misclick quite a bit. Here we go. So I'm going to add a mirror modifier, <laughs> mirror modifier. Turn on clipping like this, good. And now I'm going to go ahead and select the face. So up here, I can turn it to transparent mode right there. Select the face, delete this. That way, if I subdivide it, it's not going to go weird since there's two faces touching one another. I'm also going to add a subdivision surface modifier like this so that I can get the basic shape and get some more geometry than just a square. And then it also smooths out. Ta-da, done. No, just joking. We're going to be making the body section and the legs and the arms and the eyes separate from one another because it's going to be easier to sculpt, easier to easier to texture, easier to animate, and all of that stuff. So all I really want at the very start is the body like this. A nice feature in Blender 2.8 is there's just panels up there at the top. So if you want to sculpt, you can go ahead and sculpt by pushing the panel up there. Now, before we get started, I actually need to apply those modifiers and now I can go into sculpt mode. Over here on the right, there's a screwdriver in our gear. That's all the settings. Here are all the brushes. And you'll see me use basic, basically the same moves over and over again. Holding shift will smooth and just mouse button will add like normal. And we want to go ahead and go to dyno topo, dynamic topology, always have this on. Now, what that does is makes it so as I stroke, it actually creates geometry on the mesh. And with that, we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and select my favorite brush. This is clay strips. It's very rough and it's good at blocking out shapes. So when it's really primitive geometry like we have right here, it's gonna be really good to try to get bigger shapes to cut into the mesh. Now, how you do that is you hold control and you'll actually cut in while you stroke as opposed to just stroking normal, which will give you, you know, the normal look. And I want to go ahead and try and get all this new geometry here and get the shapes I want. Now, something I had to set up differently for my setup is I use a Wacom tal tablet. This is very extremely hard to sculpt with a mouse, right? And so I had to go and change everything so that my, my uh, middle mouse button was set to the pen, but even zooming out and just navigating around this is not set up for a Wacom very good, as opposed to ZBrush, which really, really is set up to be able to just dynamically move around. So that's one of the first flaws that I started to see with inside Blender is the navigation isn't as natural as it is inside of ZBrush. Is it bad? No, it's not that bad, but it's definitely not as fast and as fluent. And when you're doing art, the more comfortable you can make somebody, the better. So what I'm doing right here is just trying to get a hole for the mouth. And it's kind of looking silly. It's looking like a, I don't know, like a nematode or some sort of worm thing. And that's okay. As you sculpt, you just make as many mistakes as you can. You just try to block out shapes. I'm not going for detail. That is something I see a lot of people do wrong is they try to just focus on the detail. And that's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to build up silhouettes, shapes. Now, as I look at the shape, I'm seeing that it's not looking the way I want. I mean, for example, if I put the eyes right here, boop, 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 you can see it looks more like a worm and less like a shark. So I'm gonna tab out of this, and this is the coolest thing. I can tab in and out between scope mode and edit mode, and then I can just go ahead and select what I want to move and use Blender's native functionality to just move this perfectly like that. And there we go. This is already looking a lot better. And again, I'm looking at form and shape. And something that was really cool is, here, let me smooth this out really fast. So again, I'm holding shift to do this. 
control will cut in, shift will smooth, and then the other one is just the normal. You need to know that if you're sculpting, you do that all the time. And so that's looking better. But right here is the coolest part, is it made this hole that we had that much better. So it's going down inside. So as I bake that out and things like that, it will actually look like a mouth going down into the gut right there. And so I'm liking this, but I want to start to add some extra shape. So I want to see what the legs look like and start to sculpt around those legs. So again, tab into edit mode. Let's add a cylinder. And then I'm just going to scale this down. S for scale, R for rotate. You probably know that already. Everyone knows that, I think. And we're going to go ahead and just extrude these things out. Now, what I typically do is hold Alt and then click to extrude cylinders, but it's not working inside of Blender. So if anyone is, is it a Blender 2.8 thing? I don't know. Typically what that would do is it'd make it so that it extrudes and then turns it based on where you're clicking. But so what I had to do is basically just extrude, extrude that out, scale it down, things of that nature. All right, that leg is looking pretty good. Just, just for a block in detail, I'm going to duplicate this and then put this around the body to see what that looks like. The middle one here, I like to scale up so it's not the same size. Already it's looking much better, getting a good idea of where everything is. Now we've been rushing pretty fast. I like to get straight to the point. I hate the tutorials that take forever where they just sit there and they talk and they say, hey, welcome to my tutorial. And then it's like eight minutes before they start to get into it. But one of the disadvantages, sometimes I go too fast and so I can't talk about why I'm doing the things I'm doing. So it's going to go ahead and sculpt for the next little bit here. And I want to just talk about my workflow more or less in a little bit more slow, detailed ways. When sculpting, it's basically three properties, build up, subtract, and pull. Those are the three things that I'm doing most of the time. So for example, right there, I'm building up. There I'm subtracting. And you'll actually see that I don't like this tail. The length is too stubby. And so I'm going to edit, go into edit mode and pull that out. And so I'm just looking for the correct shape. Yeah, I'm adding a little detail here and there, but I don't get hung up on it because I know everything can change. If you don't have a mindset as an artist that you might change something, you are doing yourself a disservice. Even if you spend hours and hours and hours on something, if it doesn't look good, you're not doing yourself a favor to just leave it. So for example, right here, I'm pulling just like I said I would. And you see how sloppy I'm being. Again, I'm just looking for shapes. I'm looking for silhouettes. And that is actually why I went ahead and put those legs in. I just wanted to kind of see how the, the legs would fit in conjunction with everything else. And I'm going to add claws later and then the eye stalks too, and some teeth. And the more you just get the shape, the better you understand what things are gonna look like. Now, why do I keep the eye stalks and the teeth and the arms and the legs separate? Because as far as animation and baking goes, it's gonna be a lot easier to do that. Also, I'm just gonna bake off one claw and duplicate it. I'm just going to bake off, bake out one leg and duplicate that. I don't need to sculpt everything with different detail. I just basically have to do one leg and then duplicate that, one arm, duplicate that, so on and so forth. Already, you can see this is looking better and better, and it's only been about probably, what, 20 to 30 minutes of sculpting. Here, I'm just going back and forth, trying to not stay too long on one thing. I like to blur my eyes to try and see what that looks like too, to see if the silhouette's looking good. Now, this part is really important, and it's really cool. As you tab in and out, Dino Topo actually gets deselected. Now, when I go in, I want to actually have some geometry on this. So I'm going back, and I'm Dino Topo topologizing this, I just made up a word. I'm using Dino Topo to go in and put a lot of different faces so that I can get some detail sculpted onto this. This is basically the Z, uh, the remesh modifier, but with a lot more fine control and functionality. So that's really important. Now I'm gonna just go in with this uh, crack tool and put in, uh, <laughs> what is it called? It's like a line tool, I guess and just kind of get some of those, those details added in there. And then I'm going in and just working up the shape, looking at the shape, always looking at the shape. Now that I have more shapes and form, I'm going to go ahead and add some teeth so that I can start to work on the mouth area because without the teeth, it's gonna be hard. So I'm just using cylinders and I'm keeping these separate because I don't want to sculpt the teeth. I want these as separate mes meshes. And all I'm going to be doing basically is rotating these things, extruding them out, in the basic shapes, control R to add an edge loop to give it some more form. 
But again, I don't need this to be perfectly smooth. I'm just looking for, what have I said 52,000 times? Shape, shape and form. And so trying to figure out what I like, just changing directions. I kind of like those angler fish that have a bunch of teeth just going every which way because it doesn't really matter. It's not used for tearing. It's used more for like grabbing and uh, holding on, like caging its prey. So I kind of like that. I'm thinking of this as more of an aberration, not an actual animal, obviously. And so I like to kind of just add this coolness factor. So a lot of teeth just going every which way, even though that would be really hard to open and close your mouth like that. I just duplicate this and then I'm extruding the tops there. And that looks really cool. I like where this is. Now, as I go into sculpt mode, do I like the shape? Uh, pretty close, except I need the head to be, oops. Need the head to be a little bit taller. So I'm going to extrude this out like that. And then I can just symmetrize that to make it um, balanced. But I need to change the X, Y. So you go mesh, symmetrize like that. I didn't explain very well what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the nose to be higher. And so that's why I extrude that out. I'm um, just trying to play around to get this. Is it dino topode? It's not Dino Topode. Ah, every time you tab in and out, you have to change that. Or maybe you don't. If you guys know better, let me know. Do you have to tap? Like every time I do, it does. So I just kind of fast forward it there because it's more of the same, just building up. Here I'm building a claw just out of a cube like this. Now, if you don't want to use a cube because it's going to be a little bit harder to control the edges as you try to sculpt this, you can always add a subdivision modifier. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't. And again, I'm trying to get the, just the most basic of the basic shapes. Sculpting is supposed to be powerful in the fact that you can pull, pinch, add, subtract, and get the shapes um, refined after you get the basic shape added on like we have right here. And so that looks all right. Let's go ahead and go into sculpt mode. Turn on Dino Topo. We remember this time. Oh, <laughs> there we go. And then I'm just going to top to apologize this, start going around and just adding some shape and some depth, rounding off some of the corners like that, alternating between holding shift to smooth, control to delete, and just getting it more or less like that. All right. And now I'm going to duplicate this. Need to separate with P. And then I'm just going to make this into a small one. Again, I'm trying to not put these into the poses of the picture. I'm trying to get this so that I can rig it later and pose it so they're all straight and basically ready to rig after I'd, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? After I remeshed it, after I retopologized it. I'm checking the legs to see how they are, scaling this one up. I'm looking at the bottom to make sure that it's level with the other one. Duplicating this one. And my computer's starting to slow down a little bit. Once again, Blender is doing awesome, but it is a little bit slower. And so high detail content is a little bit harder to do than in ZBrush. So even that was slowing it down. Here, I'm just going to make an eye stock out of a cylinder. So nothing new here. Once again, if you guys know why I can't just hold Alt and then click, I have to extrude this out. Please let me know in the comments below. That seems to be something that Blender 2.8 lost. That's looking a lot better. So I'm just about done inside of Blender. I'm gonna go ahead and dino topo this thing one last time and get into a good place. And then I'm actually going to export this out into ZBrush because it can fill that hole that you just saw right there. And it can do a lot more things and go into a lot higher detail than Blender can. I can definitely see myself using Blender's sculpting in my new workflow. What I'm going to be using it for is several things. One, just making a quick base mesh that I can bring into ZBrush. Uh, two, if I need to actually do box modeling with inside Blender and there's a curve or something organic that needs to be done, what I can do is I can actually go sculpt something and then just do snap to face and then kind of create a good shell around that. So I, I can see myself using that. I will try to use it more and more and as I get better and better, I might do another tutorial in the future using Blender sculpting and try to get an extremely high detail model like the one I was able to make inside a ZBrush here. Now, ZBrush, what it struggles with, B 
besides being expensive, right, is it also has horrible modeling capabilities. So if I could somehow blend Blender's modeling with ZBrush's sculpting, that would be the perfect ideal. So, you know, if anyone is really capable and is able to do some sort of, you know, plug-in for ZBrush that just goes back and forth really quickly between Blender and ZBrush, they tried to do that and it didn't really work out that well. And I haven't seen any alternatives to that. What you can see me doing here, and this is just good actual workflow, is you can see me, I have the basic shapes made out. I'm doing medium level detail. I always think of it as like low level, medium level, uh, high level, and then the micro level detail I save for Substance Painter or anything like that, where I can just go in and via the texture get in cracks and crevices and things like that. But right here, I'm working on the medium level and I you'll see me just bounce around the mesh. Right here, something really cool is happening. I'm actually adding fins in that aren't in the reference because I was like, I wonder what this looks like. And so I can always undo this. And that's one of the powerful things within both Blender and ZBrush is you can just try things. And if it doesn't look good, you can just, you know, undo it or go back and there's nothing lost. Here on the legs, you'll see that I do something also very cool is I actually make them extremely broad. One of the reasons I made this so I actually made the shark drawing and everything. I made it for a D&D campaign. Believe it or not, I'm actually a DM for my friends. It's really fun. They have started a YouTube channel with me um, called Maps and Monsters. I think we have like 20 subscribers. No one watches us. But if you want to go check that out too, it's just, it's really cool. If you like Dungeons and Dragons, they just we offer a lot of it just advice of how to DM and different resources and things like that. So it's just kind of silly funness and I like it. Here you can see me adding the high level of detail, right? The little bumps and dimples on side of the crabs. And it's amazing just, just how good this looks when it's all done. But if you try to do this at the very start and you mess up, you're gonna have to just do it all again. So get the shape, get the form that you like. You can see that I'm not um, doing it on all of the legs because I'm just gonna duplicate it. And I'm also getting a lot of things, again, I'm, I'm experimenting, I'm finding things. I was just going to have that back fin be just, you know, pure fin. But as I started to dimple it, I liked it and I kind of made it a, a hybrid of chitin and fin. So I really like where that's going. Our channel's doing really well too. Thank you everybody who has subscribed. We are trying to get up to 10,000 before the end of summer. And I think we could do it, can do it, not past tense. It's not the end of summer yet. And so if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Um, what we offer is really good tutorials, video game reviews, things like that. And we, we get straight to the point. There's a little bit of talking here and there just because it's good to, you know, socialize and get to know the person who you're talking with, kind of like I'm doing right now. But I do try to get as much information as fast as I can. I'm not perfect. And so I like all the comments that you guys leave. And I've learned a lot as I've been making these tutorials as well. So here's a comparison between the two. The Blender one looks pretty good, actually, you know, considering we only spent 40 to 30 minutes. And uh, yeah, I like the shape. I can bring this in. I can do a lot of things with this inside of Blender 2 if I just wanted to use that kind of as a shell to, to apologize. And then here we have the ZBrush version. Substantially different, a lot more detail. We will be coming back to this in later tutorials to get things such as baking and texturing and things like that. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. Bye. Oh no, I almost forgot. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Here's some other cool videos you like. This is a very technical video. We also do video game reviews because why not, right? Video games are cool. So check some of those out. Give those thumbs up and all that jazz. Also check out Maps and Monsters. I'll link below in the doobly-doo. And again, now I can say bye. See you guys. Bye.